Follow Name Explain on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok, as well as joining my Facebook group, Friends of Name Explain, where you can chat with myself and many other name nerds. Check out the links down below. A demonym is a type of noun used to specify the natives of a particular place. The most commonly used kind of demonyms are ones that relate to countries. In example, Chinese is the demonym used for someone from China, Finnish is the demonym for someone from Finland, and Ecuadorian is the demonym for someone from Ecuador. Most demonyms are made by using the location's name and adding one of the established demonym suffixes, most commonly being the suffixes of ease, ish, and ian. There are some exceptions to this however, like French and German sound like the names of their countries but don't really use any of those suffixes, and we also have Dutch as the demonym for someone from the Netherlands, which is a whole story unto itself. While demonyms are most linked to countries, they can also be much more specific. There are specific demonyms for towns and cities, like Londoners for someone who comes from London, or Glaswegian for someone who comes from Glasgow. There are some more unique ones too like Jana for someone from Plymouth, and Hoosier for someone from Indianapolis, and can use for that entire state too. Demonyms can be so specific that they could even relate to just the road you live down. Like if you live on a road called Victoria Road, which is a pretty common road name here in the UK for obvious reasons, then you could call yourself a Victoria Rodian, and most people would understand what you mean. This shows us just how innate our understanding of demonyms and their formation really is. On the opposite end of the spectrum, demonyms can be a lot more broad than just countries or towns or streets. We have demonyms that relate to entire continents, like European is the demonym for someone from Europe, or African for someone from Africa. This broadness of demonyms reached their logical conclusion with Earthling. This is the demonym for someone who is from the planet Earth, which I'm guessing is everyone who is watching this video. Please, please let me know otherwise. The formation of Earthling, like many other demonyms we've seen already, is just the name of the location followed by a suffix, except this time it's the Ling suffix, one that isn't all too common. Earth actually has a few other demonyms however, most noticeably terrestrial, but other things like Terran, Tellurian, Earthian, Earther, and even Earthican. Some of these are more popular than others to say the least. Having demonyms for Earth makes a ton of sense. We are all from Earth, so it's logical to have a word that relates to us all. I personally feel that the term also creates a sense of camaraderie between all us humans. Calling us all earthlings removes other things like nations and towns and can remind us that we are all humans. Why define someone by the country or city they are from? Well, we can just call each other earthlings, right? Today, the word earthling has deep links with science fiction. The idea of little green men calling humans earthlings as they abduct us in some cheesy 50s B movie. But the word is way older than that. That. The OED's earliest quotation of the word earthling comes from 1593. That's way before things like Buck Rogers, Flash Gordon, and even a trip to the moon. Earthling is definitely a word that makes a lot of sense for existing. What makes far less sense, however, is having demonyms for other planets. Yeah, there's an entire set of demonyms relating to other planets. This actually goes beyond planets however, with there being demonyms for all kinds of space stuff. Demonyms for moons, constellations, and even the sun itself. For this video however, we are just focusing on the demonyms for the planets in our own little solar system. And yes, I'm including Pluto in all of this. I still recognize you little guy. Slight tangent, but we at the point now where kids at school don't even know that Pluto was once considered a proper planet. Like, if you study planets at school in like the last 10 years or so, let me know if Pluto was included in our solar system, I, I really need to know this. But tangent aside, each of these planets have their own demonym, and like the ones used on Earth, they're pretty easy to figure out. They're just the name of the planet with the Ian suffix attached at the end, sometimes with some other letters thrown in so they make a tad more grammatical sense. Undoubtedly, the most well known of these extraterrestrial demonyms is Martian, which relates to someone from Mars. The other planet demonyms include Mercurian for Mercury, Venusian for Venus, Saturnian for Saturn, Uranian for Uranus, Neptunian for Neptune, and Plutonian for Pluto. You probably noticed I missed out the biggest planet, Jupiter. That's because Jupiter is actually slightly different. It is not Jupitian, but instead Jovian. This demonym comes from the name of Jove, which is an alternative name for the god of Jupiter in Roman mythology, the god this planet was named after, and the Roman equivalent of Zeus. The planet of Mercury also has another demonym in this same style too, that being Hermion. This demonym comes from the god of Hermes. Hermes is the Greek equivalent of the Roman god Mercury, who this planet is named after. 
her. Wikipedia is also telling me that the planet of Mercury unto itself should actually be called Apollo in the morning and Hermes in the evening. This is a little odd as Apollo and Mercury slash Hermes aren't the same god. These planetary demonyms are really fun words, but why on Earth, or why on Mars, slash Saturn, slash Neptune, etc., I would say, do they even exist? Demonyms exist to denote people who live in certain places, and no people, nor anything else with a pulse, live on these planets. Well, that we know of, of course. These demonyms have no real reason to exist but they do anyway. Why is this the case? Well, there's actually a few reasons as to why we have these demonyms in our language. The first of those being because demonyms don't relate to just people. They can actually be used as adjectives too. We see this with demonyms on our planet with terms like English tea or American pie. In these cases, these words aren't acting as demonyms, but instead adjectives to describe the location in which these things derive from. When it comes to demonyms for other planets, it's mainly in in their adjective form that we use them to describe things from those planets. Granted, there isn't all that much on these other planets, but enough to roll in the use of these words. We could use them to say things like a Martian rock, or a Jovian storm, or a Neptunian moon. In this way, many of these words are much older than we could imagine. According to the OED, who are a tremendous help during this video by the way, Neptunian in relation to the planet of Neptune has quotations going as far back as 1849, and the planet itself was only discovered in 1846, so it took just three years for this adjective form of the planet to be created. These words being used as demonyms are also much older than you may think. Going back to Neptunian, the OED defines it as a noun as an imagined or hypothetical inhabitant of the planet Neptune, with the earliest quotation coming from 1870. This once again way outdates the cheesy sci-fi movies of 50s America. Anyway, it's through their use as adjectives as to why these demonyms get used in many cases. Another reason as to why these demonyms exist is because in some cases they don't actually relate to the planet at all. All the planets in our solar system are named after the gods of Greek slash Roman mythology, as I'm sure you all know already by this point and I've mentioned previously in this video anyway. Once upon a time, these gods played a vital role in the lives of many people, so it made sense to have words that relate to them in this way. Take the demonym of Saturnian, in example, the demonym for someone from Saturn. In Roman mythology, Saturn was the god of time, so quite a big deal, and Saturnian was used in all manner of ways to relate to him. One of the OED's definitions of this word is as a follower or worshipper of the god Saturn, with evidence of this word dating as far back as the 15th century. While not used all that much anymore in this way, it shows us that these words once had more important roles in the lives of people. Another really interesting one is with Plutonian. Pluto is the god of the underworld in Roman mythology. This means he has always had a pretty dark and gloomy connotation to him. This gave us the word Plutonic, which can be used to describe things that are morbid and moody. It has no relation to Plutonic despite there being just a one letter difference. This plutonic adjective also gave us the adjective of plutonian, once again relating to all things moody and gloomy. And the earliest use of plutonian in this sense comes from 1604. The actual planet of Pluto itself was discovered in just 1930, meaning in some ways the demonym of plutonian is actually older than our knowledge of the planet of Pluto. Many of these demonyms also came into being not merely a potential resident of these planets, but were born out of connotations of the gods they relate to. For example, Martian was used as an adjective relating to war, due to Mars being the god of war. And going back to Neptunian, it was once used in relation to sailors, who were once known as Neptunists, in relation to Neptune being the god of the ocean. Carrying on from this, what's really interesting is that all of these demonyms for other planets in our solar system can actually be applied to us Earthlings. This is because they're used in astrology, to refer to people born under specific planets and signs. E.g. if you were born under the planet of Venus, you could be referred to as Venusian. So in the world of astrology, these aren't demonyms for people from these planets, but demonyms for you and me here on Earth. The final reason why these words exist is simply because of sci-fi nerds. Many of these words are mostly used in works of science fiction, where there actually are Martians and residents of these other planets. Science fiction is a genre which deals with things way beyond our own planet a lot of the time, so it makes sense why creating 
creators in the genre would use these words so much. These demonyms might seem somewhat useless at first glance, but they do serve a purpose. Whether that be via scientists using them to describe discoveries on these planets, ancient people using them in relation to the gods these planets were named after, or writers of science fiction using them to create worlds beyond their own. These words have purpose. Who knows, maybe in the future their use will become much more commonplace. Maybe at some point we won't be referring to each other as British or Canadian or Filipino. Maybe we'll just introduce ourselves simply as Earthlings when we meet the real Martians, Saturnians and Jovians. Maybe Bowie was onto something. This video topic was suggested by Grey Computer over on my Patreon. Every Wednesday, I put up a video request post over on my Patreon for my awesome patrons to leave video ideas on. I then pick one of those ideas to be turned into a video the following Wednesday. So if you have a great idea for a Name Explain video and wish to enjoy Name Explain videos ad-free as well as get exclusive content and your name at the end of these videos, then why not support the channel on Patreon? It takes just $1 a month to help the channel in a huge way and gets you all of these amazing benefits. Visit patreon.com forward slash name explain or click the link down below. Name Explain depends on viewers like yourself supporting the channel financially on Patreon, so a huge thank you to everyone who does. Donating just $1 a month helps the channel amazingly and gets you bonuses including ad-free videos, exclusive content, the power to request ideas to be made into actual Name Explain videos, and your name at the end of the video with all these awesome people. Visit patreon.com forward slash name explain or click the link down below to find out how you too can support the channel. Thank you. Thanks for reaching the end of the video. Why not watch another and subscribe to keep up to date on all things Name Explain? You can find myself on Instagram where I'm Name Explain YT and join the Facebook group Friends of Name Explain to talk with myself and other name nerds. All of that will be linked down below. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and once again, thank you all so much.